Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft season was a short but sweet one here on the channel, and new Thunder Junction content has unfortunately come to an end, but that doesn't have to mean that OTJ limited content has to end as well. Over the course of this format, I ended up doing just 22 drafts, and I only managed to trophy in two of those drafts while maintaining a 57% win percentage, both far below my average in the last couple years worth of sets, but hey, they can't all be winners, can they? So it is now time to close out the Outlaws of Thunder Junction limited season, as I like to do here on the channel with a tournament of my best drafted decks over the course of the entire format. Now, I usually do a top 8, but because of my woeful performance in this set, coupled with the unusually small number of drafts, I'll be doing just a top 4 this time around. I've gathered my two trophy decks, as well as a couple of wild cards to battle it out in a single elimination best of three tournament, and after just three videos over the course of this next week, we will be able to crown what was my best drafted deck in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Now, to help me with this tournament, I've enlisted the assistance of a longtime friend, viewer, and patron of the channel, George, who will be playing on my alternate account to act as my opponent for each of these three matches. And today, we will close out the semifinals with me playing a green-red deck that didn't quite get there in synergy, but certainly made up for it with power. Roxanne, Starfall Savant, sure is a busted card, and this deck happened to have two copies of it. And boy did it go a long way in ensuring many of this deck's six wins on the ladder. The remainder of the deck was relatively underwhelming and just ran a few decent creatures like Prickly Pear and Beast Bond Outcaster, and had a few ways to deal with the opponent's threat with two copies of Throw from the Saddle and double Snakeskin Veil to protect our own threats. George will be piloting my second of two trophy decks in the format, the Big Bad Menace of OTJ, a classic green-white mounts deck that interestingly had zero rares or mythics in the entire deck. It turns out that curving out with a deck that has nine mounts in it will usually just win you lots of games of OTJ Limited. Double Trained Eryx, Triple Drover Grizzly, and Triple Giant Beaver hold down the fort while other derpy creatures hop on their saddles to accrue all kinds of value. Drop a comment down below and let me know which deck you think will come out on top, and I'll see you in the match. Alright, here we are in the second semi-final match, with me on the draw playing this Roxanne deck here. And we're going to go ahead and keep it. George is unfortunately mulliganed once, but that's why we're playing best of three here. Playing best of three just to eliminate the feel bads of mulligans and mana screw and all sorts of things like that. So, we're just going to lead on Ankle Biter. Kept a slower hand, but I mean... You know me, I, I just hate mulliganing. It's just what I love, it's what I hate to do. <laughs> so, I'm going to play the Ankle Biter and see what's going on over here. Um, pass the turn, drew another land. Prismatic Vista is a really interesting one because it's like, when do you actually play that to start thinning your deck of lands? Because when you have all your colors, you don't really need it anymore, but it does thin your deck of one land. So, I thought of doing it here and... Maybe it's right, but I just went with the mountain. I don't know if it necessarily matters. So, go ahead with the mountain. Um, pass it back. George will untap here. And, bit of an unfortunate situation. George misses his second or his third land drop. Um, which is a little awkward. <laughs> So we'll see if we can take advantage of that here. We're not, we don't have like the greatest or the most aggressive start necessarily. Don't think it's worth two for wanting myself with the Savage Smash here. And I don't necessarily want to attack and offer the trade because if he's got throw for the saddle or something or some way to put a counter on the sentry, then then we're going to be taking four. I think I'd, I'd be fine trading it on defense. Because he's also got the Lava Spur Boots as well. So if he misses another land drop, you can just go ahead and put that on there. Attack for four. And I don't see why I shouldn't trade necessarily. I mean, this isn't doing much for me right now. And I want to keep my life total high while he's still missing land drops. So just go ahead and play the Sentry. Unfortunately, we aren't able to punish the lack of land drops over there so far. But here comes a trained Erynx. And yet again, a missed third land drop, unfortunately, because he did mulligan here, so, you know. 
mulliganing and then keeping the two laner I think is is correct. It's just this happens sometimes. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of his only creature here. Attack for five now. Uh, have two more removal spells waiting. Gonna have to draw maybe something else because currently our sentry can't even attack. So... Let's see what we can do. Okay, Drew the Arid Archway gets another Surveil here. And more than likely kept a land on top, if I had to guess. And here we are, not being able to do anything. So, pass it on back. Ranch into Beaver. And there's multiple different ways I could remove this here. The throw from the saddle could let my sentry attack next turn, but I'm just going to use my mana now while I can. This thing does cost 5 mana, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Another removal spell and another, <laughs> another turn we can't attack. So, pass it back again. No plays with four mana and land for us. So this is a thrilling game of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> All right, he's starting to hit his land drops here. So let's see, see what we can do about that. Prosperity Tycoon still holding up two mana, more than likely, to give it indestructible. I think that is a pretty good Buried in the Garden target, as Buried in the Garden does exile... Counting up my mana on which ways I can do this. Um, don't believe I can do Buried in the Garden and Cactarantula, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this Tycoon while I can. One mana away from the Cactarantula, unfortunately. But I think it should be okay. And I don't feel the need to get rid of this mercenary token necessarily, so go ahead and pass it back now. Okay, equip the mercenary and attack. Well, there's a few things this could be. Um, I do know that his deck runs a Trash the Town. Now, if it is Trash the Town, I can block here. Both creatures still die, but he does get to draw two cards, which would... is not good, but if I didn't block, it would still do that. So, and I would have to take four instead of just one. So, I'm, I'm playing as if this is Trash the Town here. And it looks like it is. So, he still gets to draw those two cards here kills my creature, but if I didn't block, he probably would have done the same thing if I had to guess. So we'll go ahead and just do that. And now it's a pretty easy Cactarantula followed by Deadeye Duelist. And we're back in the driver's seat here. Giant Beaver, still four mana left. A stable master. Potentially debating equipping the Lava Spur Boots, but playing Sterling Keykeeper because that does tap down our Cactarantula pretty well, except for the fact that we would draw cards um, if they did choose to do that. And we drew a pretty good draw with Rambling Possum here. We could play the Possum, throw from the saddle, get a counter, kill the Beaver, Hell to Pay the other thing, and that might be pretty close to game here. <laughs> so we're going to get a counter. Kill the giant beaver. And then the hell to pay is going to kill the sterling key keeper, which is kind of a, a removal spell on the board for them in a way. So now we can just smash for six here. They go to eight. We end the turn.
All right, commando. Equip to make it a four-powered creature. And... Nothing. And then we draw one of the two Roxanne. So that's a pretty easy play and kill the Stable Master, and that's technically lethal. Alright, Gold Rush saves the Stable Master. But we have a nice little trick we can do here and actually saddle with Roxanne and then replay Roxanne here to threaten two more points of damage on the way back down. So we attack with these two, return Roxanne to our hand, and they're effectively at six right now. So they have to block Cactarantula, and if they don't block Possum, they go to one. Neither things are great for them. Okay. Double block Cactarantula. Okay, no single block. Double block would put him to three, put him down to one with Roxanne, and then Dead Eye Duelist would finish him off next turn. I mean, none of this is, like, super great for them, I don't think. Steer Clear finishes off the Cactarantula, and funnily enough, we drew the land that makes Dead Eye Duelist lethal this turn instead of next turn. It didn't really matter. There wasn't a lot of outs for him in that situation there. I guess there maybe if he chumped and stuff, but no cards left in hand. It was probably all over. So we will go to game two with this Roxanne deck up a game here and see if it can continue its run against the big bad menace of the format, Green White Mounts. So let's see. He'll go first again, makes sense. Kept seven, and I think it's fine to keep the seven here as well. I mean, it's a five lander, and now it's a great hand. <laughs> Obviously, more lands would have made this pretty darn bad, but there's a better chance we draw non-lands than lands, so. Never like to see the turn two trained Erinx against green-white, so. Go ahead and play our Stable Master. Next turn, we can play another Backwoods plus one of the three drops. All right, just attacking, offering the trade. I don't think I can. I think this Stable Master is too important to my game plan here. Although I, I could trade and then... But we do know that he's got, like, Trash the Town and all sorts of things like that in the deck. So trading isn't, like, super great this early in the game. So I think this is Backwoods followed by probably a Prickly Pair because the 1-1 one -one blocks the Airinx pretty well. Kind of forces him to, to use the scry ability here. So we will play the prickly pair. Pass it on back. We also saw gold rush in game one. So we know there's a couple of combat tricks. And Giant Beaver, saddle it, up, saddle it up and attack us for three. Scry something to the bottom. Well, can't block. It's got first strike, so we'll pass it on back. Now, we do have Roxanne now, and we know that card's good. <laughs> so I think it's time to just slam Roxanne. Kill the air rings. Attack for three. Pass it back. Five cards in hand over there. Based on that attack earlier, I'm thinking at least one of them is Gold Rush or um, Trash the Town, but 
now it doesn't matter. So do I want to trade Roxanne for Beaver? I don't think I do. I can kill Beaver next turn, attack with Roxanne, make another Meteorite, kill their 1-1, and put them to like, like 5 or something, and still play all of my other things. So this is a pretty darn good turn. So let's go Roxanne, kill the Beaver. Thought about killing the Tycoon while they were tapped out, but this push is so much damage that it might just be over next turn in a way. Doing some math on my mana here. Send everybody in and then attack or and then kill the one one push what is this yeah 10 damage they go to five so even if he can kill the roxanne it's also probably not looking too great but the best play he's got unfortunately is a drover grizzly which roxanne can take care of all by herself so all we got to do is just attack here, kill the Drover Grizzly, and doesn't matter what he blocks, takes enough damage. Which means the Double Roxanne deck takes down, once again, the big bad menace of the format green-white mounts here. The mounts deck was good. It did trophy in the queue, but it doesn't have any rare, so it struggles against these bombs when they hit the battlefield too. So, Roxanne takes down mounts. You can see an updated version of the bracket on your screen now. On Friday, we will conclude the tournament with the finals, Roxanne versus trying to uh, the Simic deck that won in the uh, first round of the semifinals. Hope you guys are enjoying this form of tournament here. It's a fun time to do them on my end. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you Friday for the conclusion of the OTJ Best Deck Tournament.